Debbie from Lime Doodle Design and today for my Doodling with Debbie feature for Sansa Stamp I'm watercolouring a clean and simple butterfly card. I'm going to be using the beautiful day set from Sansa Stamp which has a lovely array of butterflies to choose from. I decided to use the large butterfly from the top right of the set as I like the detail of the lower wings. I place the butterfly in the Mini Misty with a piece of Archer's Cold Press watercolour card and stamp the image a couple of times with antique linen distress ink. This is my go-to ink for no-line watercolouring. I stamped the image sufficiently so that I had a guideline to paint, but the ink is light in colour and its water-reactive properties mean that as I start to paint the lines will blend out and disappear. I'm going to be using Daniel Smith watercolours today, but you could use any watercolour medium you have, such as Ziegling colour markers or distress inks or watercolour pencils. My aim with the first layer of paint was to create a light but colourful base in order to add darker edge details later on. I used mainly phthalo blue green shade, which is a lovely bright blue, and then added in just the faintest hint of quinacridone rose for some pink highlights. You could leave the first layer to dry naturally, but I'm impatient, so speeded up the process with a heat tool. The first layer does need to be fully dry, or the second layer would mix and blend, and in this instance I didn't want that. I wanted more defined edges to the darker areas. I used indigo and mixed a strong enough concentration of paint so that it covered the underlayer but that some of the original tones still shone through. That's one of the features of watercolour I love, that when adding more layers the transparency of the paint allows the lower layers to still play an active part. I deepened the edges of the wings and also traced over the veins and here's where I'll say that often when I'm colouring, be it watercolours or any other media, I will use Google Images to help me determine a plan on how to colour the image. I've noticed that where the veins of a butterfly meet each other, there is often a little thickening of the lines, and so I try to replicate that. I use the lines left on stamping to determine the pattern that I painted with a darker indigo colour, although I did use some artistic licence here and there. The original image had a more graphic feel to it, and I wanted to soften it somewhat for a more elegant look. That's the great thing about no line watercolouring. The original artwork is a guideline and base for painting, but you don't have to stick to it rigidly. For the body of the butterfly, I used Payne's Grey and dropped in a little thalo blue green shade while it was still wet for colour variation. I dried off this layer and then decided to deepen up the edges slightly for more contrast with the underlayer. I then mixed up a thick concentration of white gouache and added details to the body. Gouache is an opaque watercolour paint, and so even though I'm using white, this will still show up on the darker colour of the body. I gave the piece a final dry with a heat tool and then lined up a nested circle die, held in place with painter's tape and ran it through a die cutting machine. I then set this aside while I worked on the background for the card. I'm going to be white heat embossing the stunning Bohemian Lace clean background stamp on grey card as I thought the subtle elegant pattern would complement the butterfly watercolour. I placed the Bohemian Lace stamp in a full size misty with a piece of fog card cut roughly to 6 inches square. I then treated the card with an anti-static powder bag. This will help prevent embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere. I stamped the image with Samson Stamp Clear Embossing Ink and pressed down firmly. I then repeated this for a second time to get the best impression. I sprinkled white embossing powder over the whole area and tapped off any excess before melting the embossing powder with a heat tool. I trimmed the piece and originally I did so to 5 inches square. However, then I decided that I would use a 5 inch square card base I wanted the panel just a touch smaller than this for a nice edge around the panel and so trimmed it again to four and three quarter inches square. I added foam adhesive to the back of the butterfly circle and centred it over the bohemian lace panel. I'm not sure if you've heard of the rule of thirds which state that it is more pleasing to the eye if a focal point is offset to one side. However, knowing the rule, it's still nice to break it occasionally and go for a fully symmetrical design inspired by the pattern of the background. I trimmed and scored a 5 inch square card base from Nina Solo White 110 pound card and then attached the panel to it with foam adhesive. For the sentiment, I wanted to pull out the pink colour that I had dotted into the base layer of the butterfly and so I mixed a deeper concentration of the Canacadone Rose and painted a strip onto more of the Archer's Cold Press watercolour card. I then dried the piece, placed it in the Mini Misty and picked out one of the coordinating sentiments from the beautiful day set. I treated the card with an anti-static powder bag and stamped the sentiment in clear embossing ink before sprinkling with white embossing powder, tapping off any excess and heat setting. 
I then trimmed the sentiment to a skinny banner and placed it over the centre of the butterfly with foam adhesive. As a final touch, I added a trio of Sweet 16 and Crystal Reflection sequins from Science's stamp around the die-cut circle and held in place with Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. And that completes this card with elegant watercolour butterfly set off on a detailed white heat embossed background. On the Science's stamp blog, you will find a coordinating blog post as well as details of the supplies I've used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at LimeDoodoDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.